I'm actually starting to feel kind of bad about polluting your feed with more sport games videos. I much rather prefer quality over quantity. But the saga moves so fast and things are happening with this company pretty much every other day that I really have no choice. If anything, once the walls start closing in on Dimitri Kosko and his group of Net Element buddies, my channel will be a pretty comprehensive history of what actually happened with this company. Yes, that's a nod to the Chris Chan documentary I watched every single episode while we were making the Fast and Furious game. That's how I stayed awake during playthroughs. Now, we've all known that this company is shady as hell, not just with the stuff I found in the spring of 2022, but other YouTube channels also did their own investigation and basically came to the same conclusion that, yeah, this company is some sort of financial scam, and they get away with it by hiding in plain sight, slapping their logo on other already finished products such as R-Factor 2, the NASCAR Heat series, and Kartcraft. And the only scratch-built product they've ever put out is a barely functioning NASCAR game. Because they operate in such a niche industry and the quality of a video game is subjective, the feds or anyone who can prosecute them are never going to catch wind of this. I anticipate that the company will quietly shut its doors in a few months after having run out of money. They will put out a generic statement thanking their fans for their support and that sim racing just wasn't profitable, completely omitting how the company has operated over the past four years, and Dimitri Kosko and his group of Net Element buddies will just fuck off to some other industry and do the same thing all over again. Everyone once involved with them, such as Fernando Alonso, NASCAR, IndyCar, Le Mans, the BTCC, Studio 397, Black Delta Studios, will basically be just left to pick up the pieces. In fact, judging by the Q&A period of their quarterly investor calls, the company being an absolute dumpster fire while investors continue to throw softball questions at Dimitri, these people might not ever find out they were scammed and we're the only ones talking about it in this microcosm of a community on YouTube. 2022 has taught me that professional auto racing series are just extremely dumb. Four different major racing series as well as an active F1 driver partnered with a scam company, and over the past month on my channel I've profiled a couple of different professional in quotations drivers who somehow were granted approval to race in top level series despite not actually having a racing career at all and having a known drug problem that was talked about all over social media. Point I'm trying to make is that this whole situation with motorsport games is kind of acting as the canary in the coal mine. Pro sports leagues put little thought into who they partner with and apparently just don't do background checks at all. If guys like NASCAR, IndyCar, the BTCC, and Le Mans can't get a simple video game partnership right and instead partner with like an actual scam company that is just fucking over everybody, what else are they fucking up behind the scenes? You've probably noticed throughout this video that instead of dancing around the word scam and saying it's my opinion that more sport games is a scam, I've just started outright calling them a scam and it's because of this Glassdoor review uploaded yesterday. Some of you guys might not know that not only does Motorsport Games have their HQ in Miami, Florida, but they also have a second office right next to the Silverstone Racetrack. An employee from their UK branch is telling people not to work there. And unlike other reviews I've profiled on my channel, he doesn't really mince words, which is kind of important. He starts out by saying management is full of people that have zero clue as to what they're doing and only look after themselves, and there's just a complete lack of experience or understanding of how the game as industry works. This you can actually see if you just look up the company's staff list online. There's not a lot of guys who have experience working for other racing sim devs or just racing game devs. I know when I went down the rabbit hole of who's working for them, I discovered one of their designers is just some guy who worked on mobile games, including like an airport management sim, and another designer specialized in graphic design. And basically his entire work history on LinkedIn was just graphic design jobs for like a decade. The middle bullet points are just basic toxic workplace issues. Uh, because Motorsport Games have an office both in Silverstone and Miami, Florida, literally on opposite sides of the globe, you're required to be on call literally 24-7, which is just insane and retarded. When I was with SMS, uh, most of the team worked remotely, and this was never a requirement for us. You did your eight and a half hours throughout the day, and then you went home, and everyone kind of knew each other's schedule in each department. So to hear Motorsport Games is doing this is just stupid. I want to draw attention to the final bullet point, though. A series of lies from day one to internal staff and external partners. Now, obviously, he doesn't elaborate because it's Glassdoor, and Glassdoor is really not the place for this. But it's really not hard to figure out what this guy's implying. Investors got lied to, staff got lied to, NASCAR, BTCC, IndyCar, Le Mans got lied to, esports partners got lied to, sponsors got lied to, and even their own staff got lied to. Again, he does not elaborate because it's Glassdoor and it's really not the place for that. But the fact that he mentions both of these parties is wild. But it's really the last part of this review that is incredibly damning. He says, this is a financial scheme to make about five people richer via some questionable methods. Do your research, believe the negative stories, hey, that's me, and treat any positive ones with extreme suspicion. In the advice to management section, he's saying, show some humility and mercy on your employees and partners and shut this sham of a company down. Their own employees have figured out this is a financial scheme. Just let that sink in for a second. 
they're not just saying, oh, I worked for this racing game developer for a few years and they were kind of power tripping retards. Instead, they went to work just like every one of us do and discovered, oh, I think my bosses are in on like a blatant financial scheme. And I hope the company gets shut down because this is wrong on so many levels. We can only hope that this guy goes to either the Better Business Bureau or his local police and is just like, yeah, I went to work and discovered all my bosses were in on a fraud ring. Because he seems to know more than any of us, and the way he's talking about this company is not just, hey, working here was kind of toxic and shitty, but that he accidentally discovered fraud. And with how many big names are involved in this mess, from Romain Grosjean to Fernando Alonso to four professional racing series, the sooner he does this, the better.